can you give a uh, our audience a broader sense of what it's like to live um, in your community in terms of clean water access and infrastructure or what it has been like even before uh, uh, Israeli forces bulldozed schools and, and tore up uh, the, t the, the community? So like now, I mean, after the, 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 the decision that was made in May 2022 of the, 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 the high court, like after 22 years of legal battle, gave, just gave the green light to the Israeli occupation forces to now that they can legally, according to their law, evacuate or like ethnic cleansing 1,400 residents of Masafir Yapa. I just want to mention that the, 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 what they're calling him the judge of this court that right, wrote this decision about our communities and deciding for 1,400 Palestinians. He himself as a settler living illegally in a settlement in the West Bank, which is near Ramallah. So he's writing this judgments, not from the perspective of laws, it's from perspective of like of like the, the the settlers or and settling in the west bank and kicking away the palestinians from the land what I, in this like 22 years this is what was going on always destroying water wells tens of water wells were destroyed and i'm talking about water wells which is the the world the, the wells that uh, the communities here in masafriata digging the uh, like in holes in the ground and collecting the rainwater and then start using it in the winter and after that when it's finished they start buying water water tanks which is to speak about the costs of these water tanks that the tank want to come to Masafriata really cost like seven times of the people in Tel Aviv for example or Jerusalem because we are in Masafriata it's far and the soldiers at any moment can confiscate this water tank so drivers asking for really high price to get the water so in 2019 we created the water pipes to the, to, to our communities in Masafriyata. Two months later, they came like from eight in the morning, as I mentioned, until the afternoon, destroying all these water pipes and preventing the communities to have any access to the water. And, and just to Why be clear, we, and just to be clear, none of this is done under, uh, under even the claim that this is a security measure on the part of Israel. It is just under the claim that the this territory has been deemed to be a military exercise zone and the yeah. and so there's not even a claim on behalf of of israel that it's a security issue as much as it is we need this territory for our military uh, uh, um, you know training i guess yes Yes, so this is exactly, they're always say, claiming that this is illegal, anything we do illegal. I just want to mention that even these laws in forests on us by forests, we go like after we get demolition orders, we go to this like military departments asking for permissions. We pay like we waste a lot of money. We waste a lot of time. We pay lawyers and there's NGOs who is funding lawyers to try to get permissions for us. Always the same result reject rejections of this like requests that we are applying 19 sorry 98 percent of our requests as palestinians getting permissions in the israeli military uh, departments for getting permissions for the water for electricity for houses for schools are rejected and now with the current government are 100 percent rejections this is just this is important to mention to the people while we see like on the ground, we see the settlers who live in these illegal settlements and outposts nearby. They they are like doing big farms, like vineyard, cows, sheep, cherries, and all these farms getting so much water. And because they can get as much as they want water, it's just a few hundred meters away from my home, and they're getting like electricity and water. And the, the state facilitating for them the construction, digging roads, and it, they're expanding every day. This is so crazy just to be living in this reality, watching that, like, two years ago, actually, they, like, invaded the com a community not just next to my village, 
and they wanted to confiscate a small electricity generator that a family were using in building like a shelter. And while they were confiscating this generator, the family were grabbing the generator, trying to prevent the soldiers from taking it, protesting like to prevent them. The soldiers like dragging it from the other side and ended up that one of the soldiers catch a 25 year old Harun Abaram and shot him from in the neck. He was paralyzed for two years and he died two months ago. While we just this family today look at the outpost nearby, which is illegal for the international law and illegal for the Israeli law, bringing bulldozers and concrete bombs and building homes, more farms, while this family can't have home and could not have a clean room to keep their paralyzed like son for two years. He was really suffering and they needed to keep him in the cave and he died after suffering from two years of being paralyzed. And he was just shot for having a small genera generator that's providing electricity for the family. After he died, immediately they closed the interrogation in this case. Uh, Basel, what, what, I mean, the you've grown up in this community. I mean, what does it um, uh, as an as an um, I, I don't know. I mean, I I I, I think it, it may be somewhat obvious, but from just a <clears throat> an emotional standpoint, not as a as a journalist, but as a as a, as a member of this community, when you, you, what types of emotions and uh, like uh, the how, how do you deal with this? Because there's obviously an intent by the Israeli government that is now decades old and it has become increasingly uh, acute to make it as hostile uh, of an environment for you to live in and for your families and 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 for the the people there, so that you know they uh, you choose to leave on your own, right? I mean, making it that much harder what what uh, what's involved emotionally in the context of of having to deal with that i mean emotionally we're really we're really angry about the reality that we're living in i'm just like trying to describe for you to understand to to be live in a community that it is your land and to see foreigners who come to just building in the hills nearby taking the, your land are free to 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 build and to have electricity and to have like really nice like and simple life and their goal is just to push us as Palestinians out of our land in any way and what cost doesn't matter but to be honest we today like people like me mostly jo like journalists and activists who are more angry about the world about the international community about the U.S. government about the EU who's just like con like keeping condemning this we have dozens of visits of diplomats who come we are telling them about these stories these realities and all what we see that they come and do posts here and there and sending like condemnations these are important but this doesn't work anymore it doesn't change anything the reality and the, the facts on the ground are being changed only by the israeli soldiers and the israeli settlers who's destroying our life by destroying our homes and kicking us out and settlers who creating pogroms committing pogroms against our communities in Masafariata and jordan valley and expanding the settlements and taking more land and building more outposts while the international community is almost silent about this because condemnation doesn't work that you are doing it since decades and they're preventing the the the, the Palestinian authority to go to the in, international criminal court to seek our justice there so what is what is the solution today there is no political vision for our reality uh, as a youth as a Palestinian youth who just being stuck in this situation that having the the foreign army and for and foreign settlers who's taking the land and pushing us away and in the other hand the international community was watching this and seeing this and does not move or doing anything where like as i told you i witnessed and documenting hundreds of these demolitions watching children and mothers who are standing nearby bulldozers that are destroying their houses and just crying and i'm just filming feeling really powerless and feeling a lot of hate 
and anger about about the reality that we are living in it and watching this like world that keeping like do almost nothing as i mentioned before from the perspective of uh i would imagine that in terms of what you see um uh, the united states can do it would start first with um ending aid or at the very least conditioning aid uh to exercise some influence over israeli policies um what what beyond that to uh stop inhibiting the ability to go to the international tribunals um what else from uh, you know uh, f from uh, your perspective from our perspective us Palestinians we we do need to go to the international criminal court and the international justice court we want to to seek our justice we want our rights we want the judge there to 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 really decide about about our about our rights and this those criminals who's committing these war crimes against us should be judged and should not be tra traveling in the world as Batsalil Smotrich who's an Israeli politician who who's a settler himself traveled to, to the US to France and can't speak there he's a settler he's hard he's like violating the international the international law but they are still hosting him in the US in France and he's can committing conference talking very racist against us Palestinians and coming back here committing this racism no one stopping this no one doing anything I mean if the US do what you just mentioned this itself can guarantee to end the occupation that going on since the case but the US does not want to do to do anything to uh, to end the occupation and they should and people in the street in the US who 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 should move and should push their government to do s s something this is why we are writing this is why i'm talking to to you because people in the us should realize where where their money go and where their money what does their money doing to us uh, and i hope that this is coming soon well, uh, Basil Adra, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, we will put a link, obviously, to the piece uh, that you've co-authored with the Avul Abraham. Um, uh, good luck. I, um, I, I, I hope this, uh, you know, your piece uh, resonates with people, and um, it's long overdue that the United States use its uh, influence. Um, uh, and and if it's ineffective, then then to simply end aid uh, to to not support this type of thing. But uh, Basil Adra, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.